let's just do the video quick. Let's let's just do let's just do the video. But we, we can do that later. But we look we got we got like five videos to do, man. Let's just do the video real quick, and we'll just knock one of them out, right? Hey everybody, it's Dave and Olive. Thanks for joining us here at Book Blather. We did another used book haul. Okay, so I don't know what it is with these. We just uh, are such a sucker for these used book hauls. We we just, uh, you know, I could like, um, I could, it, bookstore, used bookstore. I just, we just love book shopping. I could and I just love browsing for books. I could do it for hours and I, I, I could be in like a bookstore like all day. I just like totally get lost and lose track of time. So keep being a sucker for these used bookstores and used book fairs and you know then you find the stuff and the stuff so you search browsing forever you find a lot of cool things and and it's so cheap you know you you have to get them and bring them home so that's what we did we didn't we did another uh another used book fair another used bookstore so uh, I, I had to take my daughter to a photo shoot right we live in connecticut and i had to take her and it was it was it was she doesn't drive yet so it was pretty far away and it was so it was far enough away that I wasn't gonna drive all the way back home and then go all the way back and get her again a few hours later so um, so we went to so I, we drove I drove over there and I, I needed to find something to do for you know basically like three or four hours um, I figured ah, I can get a piece of pizza but you know what am I gonna do for the rest of the time so this was in Woodbury Connecticut and there's not a lot going on in Woodbury Connecticut so there's no bookstore first thing I look for no bookstore even in like the near vicinity so I, I did some more poking around because there wasn't a lot else going on there either and then I actually found that the local library has like a little just used bookshop like affiliated like right next to the library so I figured it was probably gonna be a bust you know I figured out oh, it's just like the library overflow it's not gonna be much there but I'm I mean what else am I gonna do I can't go you know eat pizza you know for three and a half hours so let me just go check it out so I went over there really really glad I, I did we've been pretty lucky lately with the with these used bookstores and and this was a total hit I was like so pleasantly surprised so this is it's called the bookseller and again in Woodbury Connecticut and here you can see a little bit from the outside just give you an idea of what the place looks like it doesn't look like anything great from the outside and from the inside it's not anything great either uh, I, this is actually all I got because when I went inside I always when I take video in these places I always just to be polite you know I always ask them first I say hey, I have a little booktube channel do you mind if I take just a little short video and first time this happened to me the guy actually said no and um, so it's not the type of thing you can't I don't, you can't ask why without sounding rude so I just said okay and um, so I'll put up this picture from their website so you can kind of get a, an idea of what it looks like on the inside um, it's kind of dumpy on the inside you know no 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 great shakes but um, I, I don't know what the issue is but you figure it's usually free advertising why, why he didn't want me to take video in this public place I don't know but um, in any event, it, inside, even though it's not that big and it's not very fancy in there, um, it was great. Like I, I, I was, I was actually in this little place for a couple hours, like just going down the aisles, like book by book, because it was. I think they have like some overflow from the library, but they take a lot of donations from from lo from people in town. And there was like a, when I was there, a, a number of people came in donating books. So. They had all sorts, I mean, they, they had all sorts of like bestsellers and current books, um, hardcovers, but then they also had classics and older things too. So um, I, I, I couldn't believe my luck in this place. I found book after book was stuff, not not just stuff that I wanted, but, but things that I was going to get, things I was planning to get, and they had it there. And the books were like, like a you know, new hardcover was like $3 or a paperback would be like a buck. So... Um, so anyway, so uh, we got a few um, that I was I just was really excited about. So let's go through quick. We got we got a, a little assortment too, a few fantasy sci-fi, but then also a couple other just you know um, bestseller books that we wanted to read. So first one we got um, was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. 
I've really wanted to get my hands on this book for a while. And this is, uh, you know, it's sort of like a, uh, it's bestseller. Everybody's heard of it. It's, uh, you know, modern day uh, Lolita story. This one um, between a, um, a, a teacher and a student. But uh, I, um, so, you know, we went to this shop, this was a little while ago before we were filming this, and uh, so I actually read this as soon as started reading it as soon as we got home. So I actually read this already, so that's all I'm going to say about it, because we're going to put a review up for it very shortly, so, but I was really excited to, 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 to find this one. Um, then the next one we found was another bestseller we had wanted to, to pick up, um, Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. Uh, this was the, won the Booker Prize in 2020. And this is about a, um, it, it's about a kid, I, it flips back and forth, I think, from, from his childhood um, and, and when he's adult. But um, it's about a boy that supposedly it's a very, um, you know, heartbreaking story about a boy that's trying, as very little, trying to care for his alcoholic mother while also trying to discover he's, he's so little that, um, you know, he doesn't realize that he's gay, so he's trying to come to his kind of a coming-of-age story of him learning about his own sexuality. Um, so um, definitely wanted to read this one. So again, it was like I couldn't believe that they had like a basically brand new copy of it there. Then the next one was, we found was a thriller, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, which I've been meaning to pick up for a long time. Everybody's talking about this book. Um, this is about a, a woman that, um, um, you, you know, ends up apartment, apartment sitting in this, you know, fancy apartment complex and another apartment sitter goes missing. So then it's a, apparently it's a wild thriller about whether, you know, and, and whether there's any escape from the building. And everybody says it's really, really good. So, you know, um, really excited to find that one there. And then um, the last one of the non-sci-fi fantasy stuff we got was um, Anna Karenina uh, by Leo Tolstoy. I've just seen some people talking about this one lately. So this was the nice um, Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. And, um, and I, I, it's just one, you know, this uh, um, uh, a famous novel that probably most people have heard of, uh, Social Scandal and... Um, the late 19th century Russia and um, supposedly it's a you know great novel that I've never read usually one I'd be intimidated by because of the length but um, um, I couldn't couldn't pass it up picking up this um, the deluxe penguin edition okay and then there was I had just been thinking that one of the few I don't often reread books but one of the books that I wanted to reread was one of the first books that I ever read as a kid which was the hobbit and uh i'm not even sure i actually read the whole thing as a kid i can't even remember it was so long ago that's how old i am and so um i i was thinking back i, I think i got that book like in the school library and i still remembered because it was like one of the first books that i like real books that i had ever read and I still remembered what it looked like. And I was like, wow, I, I had been thinking about it. I wanted to get it very recently. And I was like, it would be nice if like, I got to go on eBay, see if I can find that same edition that I was that I read back then with the, with the, the paperback yellow cover copy. And uh, I'm looking in the classics and sure enough, there it is, a dollar. Um, <laughs> great condition, um, the exact uh, version that I wanted. So I picked it up. As you can see, I, I, I started reading this one already. So another really lucky find there. I couldn't believe. All right, and then there's another book that I was definitely going to pick up because I've been hearing everybody talk about it is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, the first book in the first Law Trilogy, which um, I will probably... I'm, planning to read this year was going to pick it up anyway and and there it was in great condition so got that um the next one and this place was like i don't you really can't tell from the picture but this place was so small i, I can't believe i had this many lucky hits there um and then we had two just interesting ones that these were not books that i had heard about but this one is what makes this book so great by joe walton of rereading the classics of science fiction and fantasy. And this is basically a collection of, it's like 125 essays or something, talking about 
each one about a different classic science fiction novel and, and what what's important about it, what makes it worth reading, or, or in this case, what makes it worth rereading. So this was really cool uh, to find this. Uh, I had, had never even heard of it, but it's a perfect kind of book where you, I'll be able to like sit and just read in between everything else. I can just read one chapter at a time. Um, and um, so yeah, this is sounded like totally my kind of book. And then the last one was um, Astounding by Alec Navala Lee. And this is apparently an advanced reader copy, review copy, not for resale. So, um, and this is a, this is a, a reference to a, a stound, the old science fiction magazine, Astounding Science Fiction. And it's this tells a story basically of four very influential figures then at that time during the golden age of science fiction John Campbell, Isaac Asimov, Robert Heinlein, and L. Ron Hubbard. And it talks about their friendships and relationships and how they affected the golden age of science fiction. I think mostly told from the story of, of John Campbell, who, who found a lot of um, who would be become big writers and what is an editor of the magazine. Um, so uh, just like the last book, this sounded like a really interesting one that I could probably read piecemeal in between everything else, and that's probably what I'll do. Um, but just just sounded like a great little science fiction, not little, but a, a great science fiction history text. Um, so, yeah. So that was it. That, that, that was enough. But um, I mean, a lot of great finds. We're really excited about this. Like I said, I, we already read one and a half of these, even though we, we, we were just there. Um, and so really excited about all these books. And um, that's it. So um, we got another couple videos coming up really quickly. We're backed up, as, as you heard me and Al just talking about. We've got a bunch to do. So uh, we'll be back shortly. But um, if you read any of these books um, or plan to read any of these books, um, leave, us a, leave us a comment and let us know. Um, or else, just if you made it to the end of the video, go ahead and leave Olive a, a puppy emoji. She always loves to see those. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you get notified the next time that Olive says it's okay to upload another video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you next time.